based on the results of our previous experiments, what connection can be made between current and a changing magnetic flux? Well, we already know the answer, that a changing magnetic flux through a closed conducting loop induces a current in that loop. This gets us to one of the magical things about physics, Lenz's law. Lenz's law states that a changing magnetic flux through a closed conducting loop induces a current. And not only does it induce a current, the induced current has a direction such that the magnetic field that that induced current generates opposes the change in the magnetic flux. Well, let's go back to our simulation. Let's look at the magnetic field that the current in each of these scenarios generates. Now, we could figure out the magnetic field direction of the current loops by using the right-hand rule. So let's just remind ourselves of the right-hand rule for these scenarios. Let's say this is our current loop, our conducting loop. And let's say the current circulates in this direction, where for perspective, at the top of this loop, the current is coming towards us. At the bottom of the loop, the current is going away from us. We could use the version of the right-hand rule where we orient the fingers of our right hand in the direction of the induced current. So here's the fingers of our right hand in the direction of the induced current. We stick our thumb out, and that's the direction of the magnetic field. So in this situation, since the current is circulating um, counterclockwise, relative to a perspective looking at that loop from the right hand side, we have our fingers curling counterclockwise in the direction of the current. The direction our thumb points is the direction of the induced magnetic field from that current. So in this scenario, the current is going to the right. Now, if we have the same conducting loop, and the current is going around clockwise from the vantage point of looking at the loop from the right hand side. That means at the top, the current is going away from us. The bottom, the current is going towards us. Our right hand would look like this. Our fingers would curl around the direction of the current or the direction the current is going in. And notice that our thumb is pointing to the left. So since our thumb is pointing to the left, the induced magnetic field is going to the left when the current is circulating clockwise. So let's apply that for each of these scenarios. I'll just go ahead and number these scenarios based off of the order in which we did it. The first one, second one, third one, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So let's look at scenario one. In scenario one, notice that we have a magnetic field from that loop that is directed to the right. So I'll label that as B. The magnetic field is going to the right. Now, notice that magnetic field is opposite the orientation of our magnet. So the magnetic dipole moment of our magnet suggests that the magnetic field itself of the magnet is oriented to the left. So this is the magnetic field of the magnet. And I'll signify the induced magnetic field with a subscript I. So notice the induced magnetic field, the magnetic field 
generated by the conducting loop's current is opposite the direction of the magnetic field of the magnet as it moves in. So in other words, when that magnetic field is increasing, increasing the magnetic flux, there is an induced magnetic field that is opposite the direction of the magnetic field that originally induced it. Well, in scenario two, there is no induced magnetic field because the magnet is not moving. It doesn't generate a current. So for scenario three, the magnetic field of the magnet is pointing to the left still. But the magnetic field generated by the induced current is also, in this scenario, pointing to the left based off of the right-hand rules. Uh, based off of the result of the right-hand rule, we have that induced magnetic field is pointing to the left. So here, when the magnetic field of the magnet is decreasing, moving out, the induced magnetic field goes in the same direction. And in this way, notice those two parallel magnetic fields will be attractive. It'll try to keep the magnet from moving out. While in scenario one, notice that the two magnetic fields, the induced magnetic field and the magnetic field of the magnet, are in opposite directions. So in scenario one, the magnetic field of the conducting loop and the magnetic field of the magnet are repulsive. So in scenario one, the current is produced to try to keep that magnet out. While in scenario three, a current is produced that generates a magnetic field that's attractive to try to keep that magnet from leaving. So notice a magnetic field is always generated to try to prevent the change. If the magnet is trying to enter the loop, an induced magnetic field is created to try to keep it from entering the loop. When the magnet's trying to leave the loop, an induced magnetic field is created to try to keep it from leaving the loop. Well, let's look at scenario four. The magnetic field of the magnet is directed to the right. But the induced magnetic field generated by the current is directed to the left. Since those two magnetic fields are opposite in direction, the induced magnetic field of the current loop tries to repel the magnetic field of the magnet, trying to keep that magnet from entering. So notice that magnetic field is created to try and keep the magnetic flux from changing because the magnetic flux changes if the magnet is trying to enter. So the induced magnetic field tries to keep it from entering. Now scenario five is the same as scenario two. The induced magnetic field is zero because the magnet is not trying to leave. It's not trying to enter. It's just staying there. Since there is no change, no change in magnetic flux, the loop generates no current. There's no need. There is only need to generate a current if magnetic flux changes. As we see in scenario six, in scenario six, the magnetic field of the magnet is generated to the right. And notice the induced magnetic field generated by the current carrying loop is also directed to the right. Those two magnetic fields are parallel. They're going to attract. And if they're going to attract, that's going to try to keep the magnet from moving away from the loop. So to summarize all of this, a current will be induced that will generate a magnetic field to try to prevent the change of magnetic flux. If magnetic flux is increasing, an induced magnetic field will, will be created to try to prevent the increase.
In this case, the magnetic flux is increasing any time the magnet was moving towards the loop. And when magnetic flux is decreasing, a current is created that, cre that produces a magnetic field to try to keep the magnetic flux from decreasing. This is the essence of Lenz's law. So when we reread Lenz's law, it now makes a lot of sense. Lenz's law states a changing magnetic flux through a closed conducting loop induces a current. The induced current has a direction such that the magnetic field that it generates opposes the change of the magnetic flux.